We will now define two new operators, a plus and a minus. a plus is defined as 1 over the square root of 2 times h bar times m times omega, and that's times negative i times the momentum operator plus m omega times the position operator. And a minus is defined as 1 over the square root of 2 times h bar times m times omega, all times i times the momentum operator plus m times omega times the position operator. We will see later that the a plus operator represents promoting the wave function to the next vibrational state, and a minus represents demoting a vibrational state to the next lower state. For the time being, notice that these latter operators look similar to the rearranged Hamiltonian that was just defined by expressing it with the momentum and position operators. Now that we've defined these two operators, let's determine if they commute. So recall, we would write the commutation relation a plus, a minus, and we'd be basically trying to find out if that equals to zero, or if it equals to some number. And if it equals to some number, then we would say it does not compute, commute, and if it equals to zero, we would say it does commute. But to find out if they do or do not commute, then what we're basically calculating is whether or not the order matters. So if a plus, a minus, minus, a minus, a plus, if that ends up, like I said, gave us zero, then we would say they commute. And if it's not equal to zero, then we say does not commute. So let's start by finding out what a plus a minus gives us. So if I write an explicitly for these two operators, I get 1 over the square root of 2m h bar omega. And that's times negative i times the momentum operator plus m omega times the position operator. That's times 1 over the square root of 2m h bar omega. And that's times i times the momentum operator plus m omega times the position operator. Now if I multiply out explicitly these terms and I FOIL them, first of all I can move all my constants to the front. I get 1 over 2m h bar omega. I'm now going to multiply the first together, which I can make a little note here. And of course I have to maintain order, but in this case since I'm multiplying the momentum operator by the momentum operator, i times negative i just gives me plus 1, so I'm left with the momentum operator squared. I'm now going to do outside. Again, I have to maintain order, so I'm going to get negative i m omega, because all the constants can come up front, but I get p hat times x hat. I'm now going to do inside. In this case, again, I can multiply all the constants out front, so I get i m omega, but this time I'm going to get x hat times p hat. And finally, I can do last. And so in this case I'm going to get m squared omega squared times x hat squared. Now what I can do is I can start to group together terms inside this big long expression. So again I have 1 over 2m h bar omega. I'm going to group together the p hat squared, the momentum squared, plus m squared omega squared x hat squared. So that I'm going to keep together in one big term. I'm going to also create a second term where I'm going to have this 1 over 2m h bar omega. But what I'm going to pull out from the rest of the terms, which I'm going to put a little curly brace underneath, because it's these two terms that are going to be left over, will I have an i m omega. So I'm going to write that out, i m omega. And then what I'm left with is, will I have a positive x hat p hat? minus p hat x hat. Now this x hat p hat minus p hat x hat, well, that's just the commutation between x hat and p hat. And we've already done that in a previous part of the class, or of the course, and we know that that's equal to i h bar. So I can rewrite out this whole expression starting from the beginning, 1 over 2 m h bar omega times p hat squared plus m squared omega squared x hat squared. 
and to that I'm going to be adding on, well, I've got a bunch of terms I can start to cross off. I have an omega and an m on top. I have an omega and an m on the bottom. And so what I'm left with is i over 2 h bar. And since I have this commutation relation, then I can just write i h bar. I can continue to simplify. What we just defined a second ago was that we said that the Hamiltonian was equal to 1 over 2m times the momentum operator squared plus m squared omega squared x hat squared. And here I have inside this term I have 1 over 2m times momentum squared m squared omega squared x hat squared. So really what I have here in this first term is 1 over h bar omega times the momentum operator, or sorry, times the Hamiltonian. And to that, well, I have i times i in the second term, and so really this isn't a plus, this is actually a minus one-half, since I can cancel out one h-bar and the second h-bar. All right, so now let's do the opposite order. Let's now do a minus a plus. So writing in explicitly for those terms, I get 1 over the square root of 2m h bar omega times i p hat plus m omega x hat. To that, I'm going to multiply 1 over the square root of 2m h bar omega. And that's times negative i p hat plus m omega x hat. I can bring out all of these constants up front. 1 over 2m h bar omega. And again, I'm going to FOIL out all these terms, so I'll start with the first term. That'll give me negative i times i is 1, momentum operator squared. I'm going to do outside. In that case, I'm going to get plus i m omega p hat x hat. I'm going to do inside. And so in that case, I'm going to get minus i m omega times x hat p hat. And then finally, I'm going to do outside. Or sorry, I'm going to do last. And that's basically going to give me m omega omega squared m squared x hat squared. Again, I'm going to group together my terms in a similar way. I'm going to get 1 over 2m h bar omega. And I'm going to have, I'm going to group together the momentum operator squared plus m squared omega squared x hat squared. And then over here, I'm going to be subtracting. And I'm going to have 1 over 2m h bar omega. And I'm going to have, multiply that i m omega because I'm going to have all of these constants, this i m omega and this other i m omega that can get pulled out. And I'm going to get x hat p hat minus p hat x hat. And again, we can invoke this commutation relation between position and momentum equal to uh, i h bar. Also over here again, I now have this 1 over 2m times momentum squared plus m squared omega squared x squared. And I will add the x squared there since I forgot to add it in before. So again, I get 1 over h bar omega times the Hamiltonian. And this right-hand term, well, I'm going to get, after I cross off a couple of terms, m omega on top, m omega on the bottom, I get minus 1 half h bar times i, and I forgot an i here as well, i times h bar. And I'll finish simplifying. 1 over h bar omega times the Hamiltonian. Well, I've got i times i is negative 1, so in this case I'm going to get plus I can cancel out those h bars, so I get a plus one half. Finally, let's now find out if they commute by doing the explicit operation, where we're going to find out does it matter if order is important. So we've got a plus a minus minus a minus a plus. Well, that's equal to one over h bar omega times the Hamiltonian minus one half. In that case, I'm going to minus, and this is a minus a plus, so I've got 1 half, or sorry, 1 over h bar omega, h hat minus 1 half. 
and that's because the minus distributed itself into both those terms. Well, here I've got a plus 1 over h bar omega times the Hamiltonian, minus 1 over h bar omega times the Hamiltonian, so those two terms cancel each other off. But here I've got minus 1 half, minus 1 half, so in the end what I get is negative 1. And so what this says is that these two operators do not commute. Regardless of the fact that they do not commute, we can use the latter operators to define the Hamiltonian. Recall that when the Hamiltonian is applied to the wave function, we get the energy and the wave function returned to us. Therefore, we can use either order of the latter operators to find the energy of the state. For instance, if the Hamiltonian is defined as h bar omega times a plus times a minus plus one half, and then it is applied to psi, then we will get back the energy times psi.